Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 77 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Last episode, I got to work getting my basic infusion crafters and my wyvern infusion crafters all the way upgraded to draconic infusion crafters, and we started a little bit of a process of automating the infusion crafting courtesy of XNet. Super cool. Loving the fact that this was an option um because i tried really hard to automate these things on um, my sky factory map and blood magic item transfer worked but i kind of like being able to do things differently you know i don't I, I do my best to not repeat builds so the fact that i had another option was really exciting for me so uh with that said i also pop down the stairs and turned this bad boy on so he's running at the moment uh and we're cooking up eulorium uh, that, that's what I'm after. Uh, I, I ran into, I don't want to say like too much of a power problem. Oh good, we have a full stack of Eulorium inside our big re reactor, extreme reactor, uh, whatever. And uh, we should have yeah, some Eulorium in here. A little bit. Tiny little overflow amount. But considering we have a full stack in the input buffer and that thing's only been running for a few minutes, we're actually in pretty good shape. Um, oh good, more Eulorium coming in. Beautiful. Um, so what I'm going to work on today um, is probably going to be related to a turbine. So there's two ways you can run your reactors in the extreme reactors slash big reactors mod. Um, there is this guy, which is just your standard I put fuel in and I get energy out mechanic. Um, the other way to do it is that this thing can be turned into, hello you, yeah. Uh, you can turn this thing into a water reactor, like water-based, like coolant reactor. And basically you, you put water in, it turns it into steam, and the steam gets piped over to a turbine, and the turbine generates your RF. Uh, and the turbine turns that steam back into water, and you can, I think, make a closed-loop system and have, like, just basically water and steam going back and forth. So uh, that's what we're going to work on today. I'm going to get started with what we need to get up and running for a turbine. Um, now, I'm not sure if any of the numbers have changed between extreme reactors and, and, and big reactors. Um, you know, extreme reactors is the 1.10 version, and in 1.7 it was big reactors. Um, I don't think the mod creator who originally made big reactors is around, so somebody else uh, basically ported the mod to 1.10 and, and renamed it extreme reactors to help indicate the fact that this is like, uh, you know, not the same person's mod, pretty much. So, let's get started with what we need to get. And I'm gonna go double check all the numbers on how I wanna build my turbine. All right guys, so I've come up pretty much with what I wanna do. Um, we need to build a seven by 16 by seven reactor. Uh, so we're gonna need a bunch, or turbine, I'm sorry. So we're gonna need to first off teach this thing a bunch of the turbine pro stuff that we need. I also taught it how to make um, those Enderium blocks, because we're going to need something like those soon. So let's teach it this stuff. So one, we need this guy, and this requires a turbine housing core. Uh, and I think you ought to know how to make comparators, so that's cool. Turbine glass, that should be cool to do. So we'll definitely want some of those guys to start. Now, of course, I didn't like do any math around how many of these we need. So I'm going to start off with just a stack of turbine housings. Does that sound cool? So it looks like we have everything we need to craft this. Um, not terrible on resources, honestly, it looks like. So that should be totally doable. Uh, it might need to do a little bit of cooking down here, which is fine. We have to turn coal into graphite. No big deal. Wish I had a faster furnace. That would be really nice right now. What are my furnace options? I mean, there's... If we speeded, if we sped this dude up, I haven't even checked to see like how fast this can go. Oh, nice! All our redstone that we're getting is getting cooked up in there. All kinds of ore processing happening. Eulorium for days. Um, once we get this up and running, though, we should be a lot more efficient on eulorium usage. Um, so that's cool. So you are doing what? What's taking you so long to get? Oh, turbine housing. You have to get the turbine housing cores. Is that what you're doing? So you're just making a bunch of graphite right now. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's look at clearing out the area that we're going to need. Does that sound cool? Yeah, let's do that. So I've got my drill augment. Um, three by three, what we want to do? Or do I want to make a round to get in a... 
a, a, a five by five. Drill five five. That needs empowered in Yori and Diamantines. Not too bad. Meh. I think we're good at three by three. Uh, so basically what I want to do, I decided that inside this wall <clears throat> and this wall is where I'm going to want to put maybe two turbines eventually. Like one turbine we're going to start off with for now. And then we'll kind of work our way up. So I need... Uh, yeah, that was not what I need. Something like this. So that's seven across. Um, and... That is cool. And remember, holding shift makes you not have that thing. So that's what we're looking at in terms of we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. And then 16 blocks back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That should be cool. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think that's right. Oh, no, wait, Dirk. <laughs> I'm three blocks further back than I need to be because I started counting incorrectly. Three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That looks good to me. All right, I'm gonna clear out uh, the rest of this stuff off camera. Hey, buddy. How's it going? One of the benefits of having that aversion obelisk, by the way, is totally the fact that uh, only blizzes can spawn and those uh, other types of blocks. All right, um, back in a minute, gonna clear out the rest of this area and maybe just uh, seal this up a little bit. All right, guys, so that's what we're looking at doing. I like it. It looks good, right? Yeah, look at my design skills. I have the glowstone and things. Booyah. You guys wish you had my design skills. All right, how'd my turbines uh, turn out here? You uh, took a while-ish to craft, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm going to ask for about 256 more of these. I don't know exactly how much I'm going to need, but we might as well kick off the crafting operation because I know I'm going to need to use the turbine uh, housings to actually make the glass, among other things. So might as well kick off the turbine housing production. So basically, we just turbine housing... May have grossly underestimated the amount of turbine housings I'm going to need. Yep, definitely need more. All right, so you, let's get our acceleration wand. That's gonna help. Uh, wand of acceleration, where you are, there you are. Fastest mode. Go, Alley Smeltery, go. Yay. This definitely makes things a little bit easier. Uh, this can go away. I don't need him. So turbine housings are starting to be crafted here. Man, this thing can't even put the coal into the <laughs> smelteries fast enough. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to figure out a way to smelt things a little bit quicker. I think that would be a cool idea. I just have to, like, figure out what a good way to go about it is. All right, we're getting there. So this guy goes on this rim. And then we run along this line. And then we have to fill in the sides with glass, which is going to be the hard part. Hard-ish. All right, so that all looks good. So 
So I'm going to put these away. And I'm going to get 192. Does that sound good? We have 192 turbine housings available. So that's like a good start to turbine glass. Nice. Dude, I love like the auto crafting glass thing. All right, so let's get this stuff up and running. So basically we're going to run, I wanna make sure I do this right. Don't accidentally put it on top because that would be really annoying to clean up. There we go, not too shabby. Builder's wand makes all the difference. Uh, mode up and down from original block, no building on top and bottom face, cool. Beautiful. More turbines. So I'm gonna need at least two stacks of turbine glass, give or take. Let's just say 100 and we'll see where that goes from. Getting there. Almost done. Uh, just waiting on the crafting of a few more pieces of glass. Now, to be fair, we're going to be removing some of this glass, but we are pretty close to having what we need. Uh, you can do it, buddy. Are you just cooking up more stuff, I presume? Yeah, more graphite cooking. That might be close to about how much we need. I think that's going to be good enough for now. Is how I'm going to leave it. All right, so that's the basics. Oh, we need a few more back there at the end. Let's just ask for like 10 more of these. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. You can do it. Uh, the other thing we're going to start crafting while I'm waiting for that. We're going to want rotors and rotor blades and a couple of things. So let's take a look. Uh, I know we're going to want to teach it how to make rotors. So let's look at extreme reactors and look at the other things we need to teach it how to make. Um, one thing we're definitely gonna have to teach it how to make is turbine shafts. Now these require cyanide ingots, which we got from all the smelting of the Elorium that we did. Cool. So we'll get those and then we're gonna want these. Um, and we're all, so I think we're gonna need about, I know we need about 80 of these guys, the turbine rotor blades. The rotors themselves, I wanna say is 14, cause rotors are gonna run up the center of our block. So if it's 16 to either side, then 14 is the inside space, right? So that's what we're gonna want. So we're gonna want 14 rotor, rotor shafts. Cool. And we're gonna want about 80 rotor blades. Cool. Um, the other thing we're gonna want is a rotor bearing. So for this, we're gonna need a couple turbine housings. So let's get about 10 more of these cooking. and ask for two more of these, because we're gonna need them for this. There we go. Nice. Okay, so that's gonna be good. So this guy goes in the center here, the rotor bearing. And we're gonna wanna flush this out. Then we have our 14 of these. And they have to go all the way across the rotor, or the turbine. And then we're gonna want, it has to end in a turbine housing, so we have to have a turbine housing in the center here. And then we're gonna want our blades set up. And blades, we're gonna wanna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. Uh, and then we wanna wand it out. That's pretty much what we're looking to do. Now, the last thing we need to do 
is create the turbine coils. So there's a bunch of blocks we can use for the coils and they're basically the things that extract energy out of the turbine as it's spinning. The best block to use, the absolute best without a doubt, is Ludicrite. Now there's two ways to get Ludicrite. Well, actually it looks like there's more than two ways. Okay. If you have a bunch of Ludicrite ingots, yeah. The way to get Ludicrite is either, so we're gonna need 32 blocks of Ludicrite, if my math is correct. I think it is. Yeah, pretty sure that's right. 32 blocks of Ludicrite. Um, so we can go, Plutonium is not a big deal to get. Um, we can teach it how to make plutonium. I think the way I'm gonna go with this is the Enderium blocks. So let's teach you plutonium, and let's teach you Ludicrite with Enderium. The reason I'm doing this is not because Nether Stars, but because Emeralds. I really don't have a lot of Emeralds. Like, I've got a few, but not enough to have uh, 64 blocks of emeralds, which is what I would need. 64 blocks of enderium is probably more reasonable, especially if I have enough platinum. Looks like I have enough platinum for 64 blocks. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's why I taught it how to make enderium blocks earlier, because I kind of knew this was coming. So can I ask for ludicrite times 32? It looks like that's reasonable. That's a reasonable request. So over here, we should see a bunch of things processing, right? Nice. Mana pearls are cooking, or ender pearls are cooking. That's cool. And you're gonna make ender buckets, awesome. All right, so that should all be not too big of a problem. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes and we'll come back once my enderium is done. By the way, while I'm waiting for all that, I am cooking up a few other things I'm gonna need. You guys have any idea how long it takes to craft 64 blocks of enderium? It's a lot. All right, I think we're almost there with the ludicrate. Believe it or not, a little bit more to go. It's uh, nice. Finally done. Wow, that took a really long time. Uh, but now we've got the 32 blocks of Ludicrate that we need, and this will make for the best turbine that we can get. Not you, you. So we wanna put our Ludicrate blocks around here. You could use Enderium blocks here. There's a bunch of different blocks you can use, and basically the different blocks you use uh, will change the attributes of your reactor and basically affect the max RF attack you can get. But that should be pretty cool. Okay, so now we've got to put our turbine housing here. Oh, you know what else? One thing I forgot to get real quick. We want a turbine controller, don't we? Uh, turbine controller. This is the brains of the operation. So we're going to want two of you and a turbine controller. By the way, the reason it says legacy is I think the mod developer plans to have like multiple tiers of stuff. For now, he just like ported directly, but eventually he'd like to have multiple tiers. All right, so we need to pump in uh, stuff and pump out other stuff. Uh, we have to pump in steam and we have to pump out water. So I'm gonna pump in the steam right here. So for that, we're going to need a turbine fluid port. Uh, that steam goes in. Um, do I have my hammer? Did I ever make a hammer? A crescent hammer? I, I tested with this with the ender IO wrench and it didn't work. So I need to make a crescent hammer. Surprised I don't have one of those already, but I do now. Um, this is how you can toggle. Show there's some other things. Uh, so that's steam in and that's water out. So basically we're going to want two of these. Um, one will be steam in, and one will be water out. Fluid port legacy. So this one can be water out. This one I'll do steam in. That sounds cool. Or yeah, I got turned around there. Steam in, water out. So that's going to be water. That's going to be steam. So over here on the fluid tab, we're going to create a channel called steam, and you're going to receive steam. Okay, and over here, we're gonna make one called water, and you're gonna send water. So water comes out here, steam goes in there, cool. I also want you receiving dire power, just so you guys have some power there, uh, and that should be cool. Nice. Uh, now we have to change up our reactor, right? Because we want our reactor to function differently, uh, which is cool. So I'm gonna actually come back here, and I'm gonna disable this. And I'm gonna make sure that this thing is powered 
off deactivate reactor cool nice and we're basically no longer going to be getting energy out of our reactor we're going to be creating only steam uh, and to do that we're going to basically need reactor coolant ports cool so over here remember when you touch enderium you teleport away haha I'll find my way back into there somewhere. Hey, there we go. Nice. Just got lost in my own museum. Don't mind me. There we go. Um, now if I can squeeze this in here. Boom. Got it. Nice. And then over here. There. Cool. And the same deal with the wrench hammer thing. So that's steam out. So we will put this guy here. And you will receive dire power. And you will send steam. And you will receive water and dire power as well. Just so that they have like internal power. I don't know if they need power, to be honest, to fun to transfer the steam around, but I always just give it power, because why not? Alright, so that should be cool. So he's sending steam and receiving water. And over here we are receiving steam and sending water. So we're gonna basically have a closed loop. Uh, and that should be cool. Nice. We don't really need this thing anymore. And we really don't need this thing anymore. Uh, that's fine. Um, I probably wanna like kill my power reserves a little bit. So let's activate Enderman and Weather Spawner Killer. So you should be doing a good job of losing power at this point. Or at least pretty close to it. Nice. So those guys are just going to constantly kill. That'll drain our power a bit, which is cool by me. Because I want to have a little bit of a power emptiness up there so that when we get this thing all up and running, we'll be good. So the last thing we need to do is give it water. Uh, for that, we're going to want fluids. Pressurized fluid conduits. So fluid transfer is going to be a little bit of a tricky thing here. We want to initially transfer water in. So you are sending water back to the base. So basically what I'm going to do, or sending water back to, let me get water buckets. So basically what I'm going to want, oh, it's raining, look at you. Here and here. And your job will be on the down to extract always active. Cool. So now that should be filling up the internal water tank that's over here. Cool. Nice. Once this is filled, we should be good. So this can hold 45 buckets worth of water. This guy's internal tank can hold about four buckets worth of steam and water. So this should represent a closed system pretty cool. I'm going to deactivate and disengage everything. With regards to water overflow, so what happens is the steam is going to come in, it's going to condense back down to water, and the water has to go somewhere. We want to make sure that if the reactor is full on water, it doesn't prevent the turbine from running. So we want to have vent overflow mode on. We could say vent all exhaust, but we actually want this closed system because this water transfer that we just set up is not going to be able to keep up with the steam production. We actually use a lot of steam. So we want the closed system. Um, try this in a single player world. It's crazy how much water you burn through. Uh, so by having it in the closed system where it only vents overflow, it'll ensure that, you know, water is going back and forth and it, it's pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to keep the reservoir down there just in case, like, I don't know, for some reason. It should be fine in a... Maybe I'll remove this for now. Um, and you should have all the water we need in theory. I don't know. Possibly. We'll find out. Um, so should we give this guy a little bit of a kick on? So if we activate our reactor right now, um, we're actually going to be producing way more steam than we need, right? So I'm gonna deactivate that reactor. And if we come over here, we should see a bunch of steam, which has a broken texture, but that's okay. We're gonna activate turbine and that's gonna burn up a bunch of the steam. And over here, we should be using up our steam and getting water back. Well, we're not using up, well, we are, but remember there's reserve heat, right? 
So once this core heat drops below a certain temperature, we'll stop producing steam and we'll start having just water in here. So in theory, we're doing good. Steam and water. We actually have like, okay, so there we go. Yep, and see it all converted back to water. Nice. So the thing is, each turbine is only capable of accepting 2,000 millibuckets per tick, right? So what we need to do is adjust these control rods. And the control rods will affect how much eulorium is being burned, basically. So I'm gonna set them all to 70 and we'll see what happens. So activate reactor and we're producing, once this thing heats up, we'll see what we're producing. Core heat's getting there. So are we producing more than we need? I don't know why it's saying, oh, 2,000 millibuckets per tick. Yes, so we're producing more than we need to at the moment. And you can tell that because that's what it says we're producing. So I'm gonna bump them up to 90 each. And we'll see what that does. 2,000 millibuckets per tick still. But our core heat's dropping, so that's good. That's pretty much what we wanna see. But look how little Eulorium we're using. We're using only 10% as much fuel as we were in the past. And we might even be able to drop this more. I'm actually gonna turn you off for a sec. And over here, our turbines are active, which means we're speeding up, but we're actually not producing any power just yet. Uh, I'm actually gonna need a power port for my turbine. Turbine. Redstone flux power tap. Cool, that's what we want. And we're gonna want Basic IO crystal. That sounds cool. Input output. Now you're set to. I could probably just use this one. Um, but you're set to input mode. So what we'll probably want. Can I have this here? It looks like no. Yeah. So you actually need to go here. And the turbine housing here. And then we're cool, right? Yeah, that's good. So we lost our rotational energy there, but that's not a big deal. So you are going to need to go into input mode, and we're going to want to bind you. Over to here. Okay, good. You're not clipping through that line. Perfect. I like it. Neat. Technically, you don't need to exist anymore. And neither does this thing, to be honest with you, because we're not producing power anymore. Reactor glass? Perfect. That'll do. All right, so that should be cool. All right, so let's see if I activate the reactor, how many millibuckets per tick of steam can I produce at this point? Well, we're at zero right now. It's interesting. Oh, right, are you turned off? That's why. Uh, activate turbine, so now it's using steam. So when the turbine is on or off, determines whether it's using steam and speeding up. And when the coils are engaged, it slows down the RPM increase and it starts producing power, which we haven't done yet. So you're at 2000 millibuckets. Let's turn you off for a sec. Wow, I can really even like shrink these guys down even crazier number. So like, let's do shift alt, shift alt. Can I do 95? That's what I was already at. Should we try 97? And we'll see what that does. Now, back in the day, I used to have a really cool program that would like automatically adjust those things for you. And we may look into doing something similar soon. All right, so that's cool, 455. So let's get that back to 97 on all the coils. Our sweet spot, like I said, is two buckets or 2,000 millibuckets per tick. Cool. Let me find the sweet spot and we'll be right back. So we're getting there. We're at 1865. So I'm thinking just another, 
Maybe 87-ish. On all my coils. There we go. So we're actually producing probably a little bit more steam than we need to at the moment. But that's pretty darn close to perfect. Um, so this steam is good. Our rotor speed is increasing. And at some point, we'll probably have a net gain on steam here. We already hit it. Perfect. That's what I would like to see. So that tells me that we're using just the right amount of fuel to produce the steam we need for this. And since we're only at like 87%, we could probably have about five or six more turbines. The next thing we want to do is get our turbine right around 1800 RPM. 900 RPM and 1800 RPM is where they perform best, um, but you're going to want to be around 1800 RPM because uh, the faster the RPM, the more rotational speed we get and the more energy it produces. So I'm going to wait till we get to about 1800 RPM and then I'm going to engage our coils and we'll see what kind of RF per tick we're getting. All right, guys, we're right around the 1800 RPM mark. So I'm going to engage our coils and we're now producing 28,500 RF a tick. How cool is that? Boom. Power is going up there. Nice. So with all these running, we're obviously using like a lot. So I'm going to turn these dudes off for a minute. And yeah, producing a ton of power. Right around the 28,000 mark. That is awesome to see. Um, so for what we're producing more power than we were before. For 13% this fuel usage. So far less fuel usage than we were using, but even more power. That's the power of turbines if you spend the resources and infrastructure you need. Now you'll notice that your RPM is slowing a little bit. Um, so there's an, with the coils engaged, it's, it's going to slow down your RPM ever so slowly. Um, now, if you're done um, using this thing, you're going to want to turn off your uh, coils and your turbine, and it'll kind of store that rotational energy. So they'll keep spinning back there, or, or they won't keep spinning, but the RPMs will be stored. And you'll probably want to turn off your reactor as well so that it's not using fuel. So all three of these need to be turned off. The downside to all of this um, is that when, how to phrase this, there is no redstone control turbine component that I saw. I don't know why. There used to be, I thought, but it doesn't exist. There's a redstone flux power tap, but there's no turbine that lets you control it. The only turbine control is computer ports. Now we don't have computer craft, but we do have open computers. Um, and coincidentally, I found online, um, somebody wrote a really nice looking turbine controller. It's for big reactors, but it works on extreme reactors because it was a port, so it totally works. And I tested it, and it works really well. So next episode, we're going to build a open computer's computer, and I'm going to show you guys how you can download and use the program um, that this guy has written to pretty much control all your reactors all together. Uh, and that's what we'll work on next episode. For now, though, we've got power flowing, and that's good. So we've got a net gain on power quite a lot, 28,000 RF a tick, far less eulorium usage, everybody wins, right? Um, by the way, by the way, we actually get in a little bit low on storage space, so we might have to make another storage disk. I had to make one just off camera before because we actually ran out um, from the silly amount of ores that we picked up from the world. We still have a lot of ores to process. <laughs> we have a, a little bit of ore to process. But yeah, so uh, wrapping up point now, though. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time, and we will automate the control of the reactors and generators so that basically we're not keeping this thing running and wasting Eulorium when we don't need it. All right, guys. Take it easy.